The name of this module is Drivers of Reaction. We have looked at the first of the two drivers, which is enthalpy, and in this video we will look at the second aspect, which is entropy. These two aspects are called the drivers of reaction because they determine the spontaneity of a reaction. Entropy is often described as being a measure of chaos, in essence the disorderedness of a chemical system. If we have an increase in entropy, we would say that the system is becoming more disordered or more chaotic, and if we decrease entropy, we call it less disordered and less chaotic. The unit for which we use to measure entropy is going to be joules per kelvin per mole. In general, gases are going to have the greatest entropy, because if we look at this diagram which represents the particle theory of substances, gases have the ability to continually move around randomly in this space. The liquids are more confined, so they are less chaotic, and solids are even more confined, so they are the least chaotic and thus have the least entropy. From this understanding, if we melt a solid into a liquid, we would say that we are increasing in entropy. And if we are evaporating it, we are increasing the entropy still. Conversely, if we are condensing the gas into a liquid, we are going to be decreasing the entropy. And if we freeze the liquid into a solid, we will decrease the entropy more. Let us consider the entropy of a reaction. The decomposition of calcium carbonate forms a solid, calcium oxide, and a gas, carbon dioxide. Here we have a diagram which shows what is occurring. Because the solid is turning into a gas, the entropy is ultimately going to be increasing. Now let us look at this example which is the combustion of octane. The reactants which were originally a combination of liquid and gas turn entirely into the mixture of two gases. Thus by looking at the phase changes of the reactants to products, we are able to predict whether the entropy will increase or decrease, and in this case it is going to be increasing. Now we are going to learn about a term called favorability. Chemical systems generally prefer to become more disordered, very similarly to our room, as we can see on the right hand side over here. It is much easier for you to make your room messy because if it wasn't, there would be no need to clean it up. A positive delta S is a driver of reaction, meaning that the occurrence of a reaction which leads to an increase in entropy is preferred and thus favorable. So it is favorable for the reaction to make the room more messy. A negative entropy change, much like the need to clean up our room, is going to be unfavorable. A reaction which has a negative entropy is less likely to go. We can also consider this concept of favorability in terms of enthalpy changes. Generally, reactions prefer to occur where the enthalpy change is negative. And so a negative enthalpy change, or an exothermic nature, is going to be favorable. In the opposite case, a positive enthalpy change, or an endothermic nature, is going to be unfavorable. Thus, our two drivers of reaction are negative enthalpy, which is favorable, and positive entropy, which is also favorable. Now why is this important? Well, the spontaneity of a reaction, which is a reaction which is occurring without intervention, is dependent on whether the drivers of reaction are favorable or not. If the enthalpy change is positive, meaning that it's endothermic, and the entropy change is negative, or becoming more orderly, the reaction is not going to be spontaneous. It is much easier, as I said earlier, to mess you up your room, relieving tension as you are doing so, than needing to put in the effort to clean up your room. Gibbs free energy is an abstract concept which describes the net effect of enthalpy and entropy changes. The equation is given as delta G equals to delta H minus T delta S. The unit is going to be given in kilojoules per mole, with T in kelvins meaning that it is always going to be greater than zero. We have since looked at two scenarios, when the enthalpy was negative and when the entropy was positive. Two favorable drivers of reaction led to a spontaneous reaction. If we use the delta G equation, we can see that where the enthalpy is negative, T is going to be positive because it is always greater than zero, and the entropy change is positive because that is a favorable reaction, 
This term, a negative minus a positive, is always going to be less than zero, and so it is always going to be spontaneous where there are two favorable drivers of reaction. Now let's look at the next scenario, where we have a unfavorable delta H, which is positive, and an unfavorable delta S, which is negative. T delta S is a negative, and so a positive minus a negative, which is going to be a positive plus a positive, is always going to be greater than zero, meaning that is going to be non-spontaneous. Now let's look at our final scenario, where delta G equals to zero. If we have one favorable driver and one unfavorable driver, we are going to get a delta G that equals to zero at some certain temperature such that T delta S equals to the negative of delta H. And this is going to be a phenomenon called equilibrium, which we will discuss in module five. So as we discussed, if the reaction is endothermic, then we must have a delta S value, which is great enough such that the positive enthalpy minus the T delta S is going to be less than zero. If we have an exothermic reaction, the entropy change can be both positive or negative. If it is positive, then the reaction is always going to be spontaneous. But if it is negative, it will be spontaneous only when the value of the temperature is low enough such that delta G is less than zero. Here is a table which summarizes the different effects which the drivers of reaction have on the spontaneity of a reaction. Here we have a Gibbs free energy equation question. Uh, it's a calculation and it reads, the formation of water from hydrogen and oxygen gas is spontaneous under certain conditions. Use the following information for this question. Well, given that the delta H value, the enthalpy value is negative 286 kilojoules per mole. And we're also given that the delta S value is negative 164 joules per Kelvin per mole. In part A, it asks us to calculate the Gibbs free energy at 298 Kelvin. Well, we know that the delta G equation is given as delta G equals to delta H minus T delta S. One thing we need to notice when we're given these values is that the unit of the entropy is given as joules rather than kilojoules, which means that when we do the calculation, in which case we're going to be choosing to use kilojoules, we're going to have to convert the delta S value into kilojoules such that we're able to do the calculation. So first off, we get our delta H value, which is negative 286 kilojoules per mole. We minus 298, which is the temperature in Kelvin. And then we multiply it by delta S, which was 164 joules per mole. But we're going to have to convert it into kilojoules, so we divide by 1000. And then we're going to get an answer once we punch it into our calculator. And we'll get minus 237.128. However, we recognize that there are only three significant figures in this question. And so we're going to remove that last part. Remember that the unit is also going to be given in kilojoules per mole. So part B says, is this question going to be spontaneous at 298 Kelvin? Well, we know that a reaction is going to be spontaneous when the Gibbs free energy is negative, And that's what we can see in this question over here. And so the answer to this is going to be yes.